the time has come where iGPUs are so powerful that they can run ray tracing. Not well. I didn't say well. With Intel's introduction of Lunar Lake, we've actually got pretty good iGPUs. Many of you probably don't even have graphics cards that are capable of ray tracing. Well, not me. I have an iGPU and I'm proud. Are you ready? You ready to push this thing to the absolute limit? Today, we're going over ray tracing benchmarks, doom the dark ages, also potential driver gains. Tune in. So I've had this Lunar Lake laptop for about three months and I gotta say guys, I've been surprised with the iGPU performance. I played all kinds of games on it, mostly Xbox 360 era games and it can run those 1080p max uh, pretty much at 60 FPS and I found that to be respectable performance. Also this thing can run Minecraft with shaders at 60 FPS. So I'm liking the experience on Lunar Lake so far. I gotta say though, I mostly use it for work and writing emails and whatnot. I did pick up the 32 gig version. I have the 258V here. And I gotta say, I'm glad I did because I often will use over 16 gigabytes of memory on here. And this thing has blazing fast 85, 33 mega transfers per second LP DDR5X. This is a Ultra 7. Now with Lunar Lake, the different tiers of Lunar Lake don't really matter that much. The 258V is honestly the best value chip you could get. Um, it is the Ultra 7, so it boosts up to 4.8 gigahertz on the P cores. The only difference between the Ultra 7 and the 288V Ultra 9 is the boost clock. So the boost clock on the uh, Ultra 9 is 5.1 gigahertz and on my chip is 4.8 gigahertz. But that's not even all P core boost clock. So you might just get a couple hundred more megahertz on the Ultra 9 and honestly that might equate to just a few percent more performance. So it's pretty much a nothing burger there. All the cache, all the GPU cores and all the threads are the exact same. Even the memory spec is the same on these chips. So for all intents and purposes, I have the best Lunar Lake chip out there. 258V, 32 gigs of VRAM, eight threads and eight cores. As for integrated GPUs, this is the fastest x86 integrated GPU apart from Strix Halo to my knowledge. So, and Strix Halo is on a whole different class, guys. This thing is for thin and lights. It consumes 17 watts up to 37 watts if you let it turbo. Um, but this thing is really kind of sipping power compared to Strix Halo. Strix Halo is a whole different beast and we really can't compare the two here. It's packing eight XE GPU cores with XMX extensions that allows this thing to use XESS natively, giving me a, just a little bit of a performance boost. Now, Lunar Lake is a chiplet CPU architecture, or I guess you could more accurately say tile. It has four tiles, the compute tile, which basically has all the goodness on it. It's based on TSMC N3B, so three nanometer, and that's got the CPU, uh, the performance cores, the E cores, the graphics cores, NPU for as useless as that thing is, and also the memory controller and media engine. So basically anything that you would need to compute or to watch a show or anything is on the compute tile. And then also below that, we have the IO tile and that's things like Thunderbolt, PCIe lanes, uh, all that kind of stuff is on the IO tile. Now there's one more tile that is a bit, a bit of a nothing burger. It's just no silicon on it. It's just basically a filler tile for structure and basically so the chip doesn't fall apart. And below all of that is the base tile, which is the silicon interconnect of the whole chip. It's based on Intel 22 nanometer. So really cool to see this coming into fruition with Lunar Lake here. And this makes it a little bit more power efficient than other chiplet designs like, uh, like Zen that use wires to connect over long distances. Instead here we're using silicon interposer, which is really cool in my opinion. And it makes it kind of a more sexy technology. So yeah, a little bit of information about Lunar Lake there. Without further ado, let's go test this thing in Doom Eternal. Now I did screen record externally with a capture card. I use the Elgato 4KX and as far as I know, this doesn't result in any performance degradation. So I could show you guys what the gaming is actually looking like on this laptop. You could see this blown up up close and also we won't lose any performance. Now, and I also did benchmarking with MSI Afterburner. Now, if you're gonna use something like the Elgato 4KX to record your games without performance loss, you're gonna need a high quality HDMI cable and also a high quality USB-C cable. I was actually sent by Silkland, really high quality company by the way, this 
4K HDMI 2.1 uh, cable and it supports up to 4K 144 Hertz at 10 bit color. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect it to support that. I think the official spec for HDMI 2.1 is only 4K 120, but I was able to get this cord to run up to 4K 144 Hertz at 10 bit color guys. So Silkland really hooked me up with this cable, very high quality cable, supports all the standards. I, in my testing, it's definitely worth the price. And the Silkland cable definitely holds up. The build quality on it is great. Um, very, very thick cable. It doesn't feel like you're gonna bend or break this any like any sort of way affiliate links down below they also sent me a usb 4 40 gigabit per second usb cable now i didn't use this for screen recording because the elgato 4kx only takes 10 gigabit but i did use it to transfer all my video files over my 40 gigabit per second nvme external enclosure and i gotta say guys this thing is ripping and tearing i got around four gigabytes per second on crystal Dit benchmark over USB-C speeds, like over USB. So this thing is blazing fast. And as you can see here, while I'm transferring video files, they're transferring instantly, like over three gigabytes per second. Sometimes I just drop a video file in and it doesn't even show Windows transferring it. So definitely can recommend both of these Silkland cables. The 40 gigabit per second USB-C cable, apparently this thing can deliver up to 240 watts as well. Didn't really test that, don't have a way to, but I'm sure it can, but I did validate. It does do 40 gigabit per second. So definitely check out both of these cables, HDMI and USB-C top-notch quality, guys. Let's get back to the video. I started with Speedway by 3D Mark. It is a ray tracing benchmark, and I have a feeling it's not made for iGPUs. We're coming right out of the gate here with 5 FPS. <laughs> That's delightful. And the screen tearing you're seeing is actually based on the capture card. I'm not seeing this on my monitor when I was viewing this amazing experience. I have some stats in the top left corner. The GPU is maxed out, but you know, we're sitting pretty at 70, around 70 Celsius, and we're using 22 gigs of that RAM. About eight of that is VRAM. About what this GPU can do in this test is 5 FPS. Don't think this was made for iGPUs. I got a score of 482, which I think correlates to the 4.82 average FPS I got. <laughs> also, the temps seem to be fine. No thermal throttling whatsoever. Ran the numbers against my 4080. It had a score of 7,247. And it's kind of funny here, my iGPU ranked in the top 0% of all results. Also crunched the numbers and it turns out my 4080 is over 15 times faster than this iGPU. Kind of crazy stuff. When I loaded up Doom, I was only getting 10 FPS, so I was kind of concerned, but it did load up. And once I got into the settings, I actually saw that it defaulted to 4K max settings. I guess what I was playing on my main rig. So I promptly turned it to 1080p low settings, literally just all settings on lowest. And then I also turned on XCSS ultra performance, which, you know, since this is upscaled to 1080p, that does mean we're going from 360p. So base resolution, I guess you could say 360p, but I wouldn't say it looks like 360p, but essentially we are upscaling from 360p to 1080p. Now, whether it be because of a driver reason or because of the settings I chose, this cutscene had all kinds of glitches and it didn't really look too good, but I mean, it is what it is. We aren't using a lot of power here and it does get better. The game play does look better than this awful cutscene. Now I started off with a demanding area. I just wanted to really stress this GPU out. And actually we are CPU bound here. The GPU is not even turboing all the way up to 1950. So uh, everything is cool and quiet though. We're only using 22 watts and we're getting 30 FPS while rage racing. I mean, say what you will, but that's pretty good performance. Now it's not good enough for me to play through the whole campaign. I was struggling here for sure. Definitely a latency bound compared to what I'm used to. I decided to try a different map and for some reason, on this map, we're getting a lot better FPS, almost double, despite there being a lot going on on screen. We're getting like 55 FPS, dipped down to 50, and only using 28 watts to do all that. So the GPU is sufficiently 
ramping up now. It doesn't look like we're CPU bound anymore. And this, I mean, with this experience, I could play the whole campaign. I could beat the game. And this is on nightmare difficulty. And as you see, I'm kind of wrecking everybody here. So pretty good experience here. If the whole game was like this, I mean, success. Ray tracing on iGPU, done. Right after I did my test, Intel dropped a driver update for Lunar Lake that actually buffed graphics performance. So I had to try this out. I wondered, could that first encounter be improved? Could we get over 60 FPS or a more stable experience? So I'm testing it out today for you guys. I did notice that after this driver update, I was able to get the full GPU clock in the scene, which as before, I did not. And it looks like the performance is a little bit higher, maybe like five FPS. I mean, I guess that's like 10% more performance. And, you know, we're still drawing, we're drawing a little bit more power now, 30 watts, and we're only at 70 Celsius. So overall, pretty good results for the driver update, although we're still dipping down below 30 FPS. Definitely not an experience I would wish on anyone. Running back this second map, and I can already tell that we got above 60 FPS for a split second there. That did not happen before. And yeah, the gains here seem less prominent. I'm guessing there was some sort of unoptimization in that first scene that Intel has fixed now. And I mean, right here, the performance is totally playable. We're only using 28 watts, getting 50, 60 FPS. That's awesome, truly awesome. Also guys, take a look at that VRAM usage. We're using over nine gigabytes. Yeah, RIP eight gigabyte graphics cards, definitely obsolete if this iGPU is using over nine at rendering at 360p upscaled to 1080p. I plugged the numbers into R and then I kind of made a bar chart here. On the left, we have average FPS on both the maps and on the right is 1% low and the old and new driver, it looks like the new driver consistently performed better on the 1% lows, but not really average FPS. You know, ran the numbers, did a significance test, and all you have to know is only the 1% lows were significantly improved, and it was only by 2.1 FPS. So it was less of a change than I thought after initially seeing it, but there's definitely something that got fixed in that first scene when it comes to CPU overhead. And hopefully they can fix that on their discrete B580 card so we can get a B770. That's probably what's holding back the B770 is the CPU driver overhead. I did not expect this chip to even honestly run this game at all, like in almost any setting. So being able to do that is a W in my book, no matter kind of what it looks like, it's a W. I mean, you got to think about it and we are doing this at 1080p, but you know, XESS ultra performance, I did, I looked it up, that is 360p. So yeah, now tell me, does this look like 360p? When I was looking over the footage, I didn't think it did, but maybe to you guys online, you're like, yeah, that's 360p, like whatever. Um, in demanding scenarios, you know, this thing getting around a 30 FPS experience, it's it's whatever. Maybe that's what the consoles get. At that point, it's kind of impressive if you think about it. And, you know, in less demanding uh, levels, even with a lot of action going on, you're getting 50 to 60 FPS, which is superb for an integrated graphics chip doing ray tracing, if you think about it. And with the frame times being as flat as they are in this game, it is playable. I was able to clear scenes on uh, nightmare difficulty while playing this game. It's kind of weird to see the synthetic GPU performance being so bad, but uh, it is what it is. It's probably just how memory bandwidth is scaling and um, you know load leveling is scaling with these XE cores compared to my 4080. But this thing is definitely not made for ray tracing in real time, guys. It can do ray tracing, but it's probably more for rendering ray tracing scenes, you know, with higher amounts of integrated memory. I gotta say, having the 32 gigabyte version of this Lunar Lake chip is awesome. It dedicates me 18 gigabytes of VRAM for memory on this APU, which is great. You know, when I've been trying local LLM models on it and also video editing on the go, I do video edit on this laptop and it works great. And it will use 100% 
of my memory every time and 100% of that 18 gigabytes of VRAM. All in all, Lunar Lake is an impressive chip for only using 20 to 30 watts while getting this performance. I mean, name one other chip that will get this performance with 20 to 30 watts. I don't think you're gonna see one. Even with AMD's APUs, I mean, I'd like to see them tested with these settings. I don't know if they're gonna be able to do ray tracing this well, guys. Now, is this the optimal experience? Would I play even more than one level of Doom like this? Heck no, I'm not gonna do that. Never. <laughs> I have a 4080, I have a 265K. I'm not limiting myself to playing these kind of games on my laptop. Just because this iGPU can do ray tracing doesn't mean that you should use it to do ray tracing, guys. It's not really made to do these AAA games like that, and that's totally fine. I never expected it to, but seeing that it can, I mean, it, it makes me surprised, and I, I'm, I'm excited that I own this chip. I, I, I can see longevity coming in here, especially for well-optimized titles. Now, also seeing the difference in the driver gains, I mean, it's pretty negligible. We saw a little percent gain on the 1% lows. It could be a nothing burger, honestly, just run to run variants. But this is another point I like to say, you know, Intel Arc is getting better and better with Battle Mage fixing the hardware flaws of Alchemist. I am optimistic for Intel Arc in general. And a lot of people really want them to be in desktop GPUs, but I think the future of graphics is APUs. It's consolidated um, uh, solutions that can combine CPU and GPU into one package. I really do see that coming into fruition as we get uh, more and more performance. And XE architecture, Intel Arc, excites me for the future of APUs, honestly, for more than the future of discrete GPUs. I think discrete GPUs will be something for enthusiasts, something for people that, uh, like power users that need to get a lot of work done. But for simple gamers, I mean, look at consoles. They've been doing it for a while now. I think APUs are the future for gaming on PC. Now, come at me in the comments, you know, argue with me all you want. That's just how I see this going as costs rise and, um, you know, as smarter, and we get smarter and smarter designs like Intel Lunar Lake, I see that being the future. So, you know, Panther Lake is gonna have 12 XE Celestial Core, so at the minimum, 50% more performance than this. And I'm looking forward to that. I think overall, Panther Lake is probably going to be memory bottlenecked more than anything else, because it will still be using D uh, DDR5 and it's not gonna have on package memory. So probably the same memory speed as this or most likely slower. So um, Lunar Lake, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more power, I know Panther Lake will be built on Intel 18A, but I think that Lunar Lake is still going to be more power efficient while Panther Lake will be handily beating it in performance. iGPUs, are they the future of gaming? Yeah or nay? Let me know. Silicon Steak, signing out. Attack. Ever review every spec he's on deck from GPUs to CPUs he knows it all no question too big no detail too small he's got the knowledge he's got the skill when he drops his take the haters stand still fanboys can cry but they can't deny silicon stakes truth cuts through the lie